Welcome to the Anxiety Slayer series. Our mission is to assist you with creating more peace and tranquility in your life through anxiety release exercises and supportive tools created to slay your anxiety. Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is brought to you by the Anxiety Slayer Academy. We've been offering a free podcast for almost nine years to help anyone suffering with anxiety find relief. Now we're helping you go deeper by providing step-by-step support on how you can get the best experience from our favorite tools and techniques for overcoming anxiety. Visit the Anxiety Slayer Academy and get your free Anxiety Slayer starter course at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my wonderful friend and co-host Ananga Sivier. We come together weekly from Kent and Leelanau to share Anxiety Slayer sessions with you and answer listener questions from our inbox and Facebook page. Together we share a powerful collection of techniques to reduce anxiety. Before we begin today's podcast, we have a couple of announcements for you. First and foremost, we want to invite you to join our private Facebook group. This group is growing every day, and we created this group to interact with you privately in a safe circle of love and support. You can join us there for weekly podcasts, self-care tips, and supportive teachings to look after your precious mind. It's easy to find at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash anxiety slayer. And also a big thank you to our first two supporters on Patreon, Joey and Elaine. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. We're on a mission to reach a goal of 500 active supporters on Patreon. This will help us keep the podcast going and create more in-depth tutorials, mini courses, and walkthroughs on the anxiety problems our podcast listeners are asking for help with. These new Anxiety Slayer Extras will be available to everyone who supports us on Patreon as a friend of Anxiety Slayer. If you find our podcast helpful and want to help us keep creating more free episodes, please consider supporting us at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about looking beyond the discomfort of anxiety and really deeply listening. Welcome back, Ananga. It's so good to be with you again. Hey, Shen. I'm glad we're talking about this topic. After our great conversation with Deborah Rebel. I think uh, digging deeper into looking beyond the discomfort of anxiety is really going to be helpful for all of our listeners today. Yeah, I think one of the things with anxiety is that it's so uncomfortable and it feels so awful that we usually try and push it away and distract ourselves. We don't want to feel it and we don't want to hear it. But anxiety is often a messenger. And when we stop and listen to its information, we can start taking steps in self-care that can bring about a really positive change in our experience of anxiety and in healing and supporting ourselves at a much deeper level. And let's talk about the two key ways our experience of anxiety improves when we actually hear it. Uh, Number one, it becomes less of a monster and more of an advisor. So we fear it less and have the opportunity to act on the message that we're taking in. And number two, We develop an awareness of our ongoing anxiety narrative. Our internal dialogue about anxiety can feed into it and make it worse. And when we hate anxiety and resist it at all costs, we're actually pouring gasoline on the fire. Hearing our anxiety helps us focus on its message rather than our resistance. And that changes our experience from being a victim to actually being a pilot, to being a lot more in control of what you have going on. is really sitting with this feeling, this discomfort, and getting to the root of what's going on. Often with anxiety, it's our narrative that feeds it. We give context and we give life to it with our story, our anxiety story, which is usually a future-based fear story, which is built around our what if thoughts, you know, something happens and it sets us off. And we have this whole backstory, this whole narrative that throws us into a future dread. And it just gives the anxiety life and context. So it really can help to look at that. 
And this comes up a lot when we have things on the horizon that we're dealing with. Um, Maybe we could do some personal sharing here. I know that in my case right now, my daughter has to have a, a procedure, a surgery coming up soon. And while this has been well thought out and researched, and while I have all of the information, uh, that that I need to feel as good as I can about this happening for her and that this needs to happen, there's still that part of me that creates a story around the what ifs, that creates a story about all of the things that that I fear, you know, something happening to her while she's under anesthesia, something happening with the the surgeon not uh, you know doing the the best job she possibly could or you know, what if there's an infection or what if, you know, it goes on and on. And how I was able to kind of get a hold of that and put myself in that pilot seat instead of the victim seat was to really dig in and learn as much as I could, even more than I had about what to expect, how to best care for her, what the statistics are, um, how often this surgery is done, more information about the surgeon, et cetera, et cetera. So the more information I had, the more I sat with it. And the more I looked at the pros and cons of the situation, I know that she is making a good choice for herself and that we're in good hands. And so there's still going to be some anxiety around uh, around it, but it won't be as as strong as it was, had I not questioned it, had I not looked at it. And really, you know, sometimes we have to take ourselves off the hook a little bit. This stuff is real. It is stressful to have surgery. It is stressful to wait for test results. It's stressful to have a loved one be in a situation that you really wish they wouldn't be. That's human. You're human. It's natural. But the questions and the digging and the research and getting yourself set as prepared as you can be, are going to help you out so very much. Yeah, you've made so many points there that that we could we could talk about this for hours. I think it really, for me, hearing you talk, it's intelligence informing the anxious mind, doing your research, gathering the facts, dealing with what is in front of you right now that you can do something about, which is that Stephen Covey principle of the things we can do something about and the things we can't do something about, sifting through those and having those two piles in your head of knowing that you can cook her nourishing meals, you can support her emotionally before she goes in, you can make bark flowers, remedies for both of you, which I know you've done, the things you can do something about to bring our awareness and intelligence and attention onto those things rather than the mind just flying off the hook and we're just trying so hard to reel it in. And then we end up in this place of of feeling bad that we're falling apart and how's that going to impact our children, which is another huge and very painful anxiety. Thank you for sharing your story. It's really helpful, I think, when we share our stories. Yeah. Well, and I I know you have a story to share as well that that will be helpful for our listeners. Yeah, I have many, but I'll stick to one. Um, some of our listeners may may be aware that for the summer I was staying with my family due to very difficult, very stressful personal circumstances, very painful to my heart, actually. And while I was away, I was due for my checkup with my oncologist, some blood tests. So I had to re-register at a local doctor surgery, get my tests done away from home, which Normally, coming rolling around to my test, there's the natural slight, as you said, there's the natural slight anxiety there that comes with these things. But this time, I was particularly anxious. And when I went back to the hospital to get my results, I was really having anxiety, stood in the line waiting to see the receptionist. I'm grateful to say the results came back good. They were very good. And I went and sat down. And I thought, why am I so shaken up? It's natural to be a little anxious about test results, but why am I particularly in this case so anxious about them, which was not the norm for me? So I sat and I thought, and I realized I'd created a story that I wasn't even consciously aware of. If the test came back and my cancer antibody marker was elevated and the cancer had returned, I was 
fearful of that, not for the return of the illness, but that my life at this time was personally chaotic, I felt. And I didn't know how to care for myself in a chaotic environment. And my anxiety was that I couldn't go deeply into my spiritual practice and the place where I go for shelter, the place where I go for solace, if there was chaos in my home life, which wasn't what I would have predicted Mm. unless I'd looked at it. Right. So then once you look at it and you get the backstory, you can start examining that. So my thing was, well, you know, if I'm going to be seriously ill, then I will make different arrangements just to know that, look, if it's going to be that way, there are different things you can do. Mm-hmm. And there's different ways you can handle this. And there are places you can go where you can be fully in your heart and in your spiritual practice. And that was very interesting to me to just sit and take stock of what that really meant. And also for me with um, hospitals, dentists, we usually don't enjoy them. But for me personally, I looked at my anxiety when it comes up around there and I don't like scrutiny. Yeah. I can handle surgery. I can handle, you know, teeth being dealt with, but I don't like people studying inside my head and inside my body. <laughs> so that's, right. why, right. that's why I'm not comfortable. I don't even like people just sitting opposite me, really staring at me. I don't <laughs> scrutiny yeah so that's also interesting you know when we look at that and then we have the opportunity to know ourselves better yeah and show ourselves some self-compassion and support ourselves more specifically in line with what actually is the story behind these various aspects of our anxiety yeah it's just incredibly valuable to do all that you can to hear the message that our anxiety is trying to share with us because it does open the door to take better care of ourselves without question. And self-care is something we talk about all the time because we need it. We deserve it. Whether we're suffering with stress and anxiety or not, self-care is such a big part of self-love. And so there are several things that you can do to care for yourself when you're listening to your anxiety, when you're working on developing this understanding, and that is tapping, EFT tapping, we talk about a lot. Uh, Essential oils are also incredibly helpful for calming and restoring trust. I use lavender all the time. I've got a number of other oils that I also use, depending on where I'm at and what I need for support. And then, of course, Bach flower remedies for calming and emotional support. There are all of these tools and resources available to us. That's why we talk about them and bring them up and continue to bring them forward because at some point or another, you're going to find that, okay, I'm ready to give that a try. Or you're going to land on something that really works well for you. Yeah. And it's important to be reminded. I have friends who reminded me recently, did you take Rescue Remedy? And I was like, no, I forgot. And mm-hmm. I was really laughing, you know, I'm telling people every day, but we need to inform ourselves. We need to inform ourselves with love and care. And you always say, Shan, how do I feel? What do I need? Right. You know, when we feel anxious, how do we feel? We feel anxious. We feel horrible. You know, our heart's racing, our heart's pounding. We can't breathe and we just want to run away, but we can't run away from ourselves. As much as I've tried and really liked that idea for the first half of my life of just taking my batteries out and ceasing to think and feel and run away from myself, I can't do it. So I've had to learn to move into myself with more support. And really, when we look at our anxiety story and we look at the specifics, it's like a really deep conversation with a good friend where you start to gain this understanding of, oh, that's how that works for you. We're all individuals. Anxiety doesn't affect everyone the same way. We're all individuals. It impacts us differently. It gets to different tender spots with different people. Some people it will go to their health. Some people it will go to feelings of incompetence at work. Some people they fear they're losing their mind. Some people fear loss of loved ones, loss or loss of loved ones through the ultimate loss, or loss of loved ones because what if somebody just gets sick of me? Because Uh I'm so high maintenance. These are all core anxieties and we might experience all of them at different times in our life but it's important to know what's going on for me right now and that's where we can really put EFT tapping 
and the bark flower remedies to good use because the more we understand what's going on, the more specific we can get in supporting ourselves in using EFT tapping for exactly what's going on. So in my case, one example would be, even though I really don't like the scrutiny of medical attention, other people looking at me, or sometimes I have a horrible fear that they're going to find something terribly, freakily wrong with me. I did incompletely love and accept myself. Just saying it Mm -hmm. and tapping on the truth of it really starts to to honour and respect the validity of that fear and calm it at its core. And leaning into our experience is expansive. We're averting it or trying to run away from it really constricts us and drains our energy, makes us feel worse. Yeah. So lean in, listen, and practice as much active self-care as you can along the way. Yeah, what we resist persists and what we accept, we have the power to transform. When, When we resist things and push them away, they just push right back at us to hold your space, take some deep breaths, get yourself grounded and lean back against the resistance of anxiety and and understand that when we look into it, it's very often not what we thought is going on. And when we have that understanding, then we can start really taking some self-compassionate action steps to support ourselves. And that's when you start to really heal anxiety at the underlying root, just take all that overwhelm and confusion down. And that's why we had the the statement at the beginning of this podcast of instead of anxiety feeling like a monster that's looming over us, that it becomes an informer. Anxiety Slayer is now on Patreon. Patreon is a place where you can easily support our podcast and help us go further in depth with our offerings to help you even more. Anxiety Slayer just passed the milestone of producing over 400 free podcasts. But free podcasts aren't free to produce, and each and every episode we create takes hours of work. Ananga and I are on a mission to reach a goal of 500 active supporters on Patreon. Your support will help us keep the podcast going and create Anxiety Slayer extras with in depth tutorials, mini courses, and walkthroughs on the anxiety concerns our podcast listeners are asking for help with, like how to get relief from the symptoms of anxiety, how to feel more secure in your relationships, and how to recover from an anxiety flare-up or panic attack. Anxiety Slayer Extras will be available right on our Patreon page and automatically delivered to everyone who supports Anxiety Slayer. If you find our podcast helpful please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash anxiety slayer. 